Hey, what is up guys? So recently I have been getting a lot of questions from you guys, mostly online, YouTube videos, via email and so on, on how to improve their skills, but not much into hard skills, which are those technical skills that you learn by studying, but mostly into skills that are mostly social, let it be soft skills. People willing to improve their interaction with their boss, people willing to learn more about how to improve their work with teammates, students willing to improve their chances of landing an internship, young engineers that may have landed a great job but are quite unsure on how to interact socially with their teammates, maybe with their bosses, maybe with the hierarchy, with operators or so. And rather than just saying you which are the best ways to improve your soft skills, which I will be preparing a video on that later on, I want to share my experience as a member in Toastmasters. So before we even continue guys, as stated in the video title, this is going to be a three video series. The first one is going to be talking about Toastmasters and communication skills. Second part will be leadership skills. And finally, the third part, which is going to be other type of skills that you develop while being a member at any Toastmaster club. So knowing this, don't forget to subscribe and click on the notification bell so you get all my next videos. For instance, the one on leadership and the one on other skills that will be developed via Toastmasters. So let's get straight to the matter. What is Toastmasters International? So probably you have no idea and this is your first contact. Maybe you have a vague idea or concept of what it is. Maybe you have already went to a session or you have been a member or maybe even best, you are already in a club at Toastmasters. Whatever the case it may be, let's talk about on what is Toastmasters International. Toastmaster International is a organization which is non-profit and it is actually based on clubs. These clubs have the mission and goal of improving the communication and leadership skills of their members. Most of these clubs will session maybe once a week or twice a month or so, and the main idea is to practice public speaking, either via speeches that you may prepare with some time before, or maybe with impromptu speeches, the so-called and famous table topics which are one of the most favorite ones because it is essentially talking about anything, structuring your speech once you hear that question. And as you can imagine, it is very useful for real life scenarios. And leadership skills are developed via roles. For instance, you may be helping with time, you may be helping with something more advanced such as being a president, you may even help to organize certain events, for instance, a constant speech or something like that. Okay, now let's go back in time, guys, and I want to show you one of my very first interactions in Toastmasters. I think the video is maybe six to seven years old, so maybe you can see that I have improved or not. That's up to you. A veces las soluciones simples, como los niños chiquitos decían, no comas, quizás ahí está la solución, en la simplicidad. Okay, so as you can see from the video, I am from far being the best public speaker. That was between six to seven years ago. Those were my early years, but I can assure you guys that I have improved a lot since then. Now, the most important thing that I could say to myself is just show yourself, practice a lot, and eventually you're going to improve your public speaking skills. Leadership skills come later on. But anyways, guys, this was a quick video on myself. Let's continue with the actual things that you can get from being a Toastmaster member. And remember that this is part number one, and we're going to get started with communication skills. By far, I would say that this is the typical reason that most of the members go to Toastmasters. They want to improve their public speaking skills, they want to improve their communication skills, they want to remove their social awkwardness, they want to get rid of their fear of public speaking maybe, they want to interact with more people, they want to get more leads, they want to improve in sales or so. Of course, I'm not going to be explaining you the importance of communication overall as in a personal matter or a professional matter. You already know that family, friends, colleagues, and of course, classmates, colleagues, bosses, clients, and much more are very, very important. But of course, knowing a little bit more on the communication theoretical concepts can be helpful for you to improve your public speaking skills or communication skills. 
Now, the very first topic I want to share with you guys is the main essence of going there, showing up for yourself, showing up with others, means that you are already taking the decision of showing up, of the responsibility of knowing that you may have a problem or maybe you want to improve something that you know it's not at your best point of excellence. This is by far one of the greatest steps that you can make in order to improve yourself, acknowledging that there is a problem and willing to improve it. You will learn that with time, the more that you show up, the more easy it becomes and more natural. So this is great news for you. Now, one of the best examples will be prepared speeches. I know that just thinking on preparing a speech and going to the stage is already fearful for many of you guys, but this is the very first step. And not only that, preparing a speech is not as easy as it seems. Typical speeches in Toastmaster will range between five to seven minutes. You need to prepare, of course, a hook or maybe a question a very nice introduction, give out three, five points of your idea, always compelling, being engaging, finally making a conclusion or a call to action, and finally giving your last hook, maybe a quote or an invitation. This is by far one of the best things that you can do because it prepares you to make formal speeches. You may prepare this in your social reunions, you may use this in your professional meetings, maybe even when you make a pitch. On the other hand, we have impromptu speeches, which is between one to two minutes speeches. It sounds very easy when you say one to two minutes, but imagine yourself being there, you just receive a random question and you need to prepare an introduction, maybe with a strong hook. You need to prepare two, three points that are logical, that make sense between each other, that are following between each other, that they are not just random ideas, and then eventually making a conclusion. And of course, a final hook, question, call to action, invitation or so. In my opinion, both of these are great. Preparing something with time can bring you the best of things. If you are going to present a report maybe to an important board of members, maybe an important board of engineers, they are senior engineers or so, if you have the time to prepare it, you have the confidence, you have the order, you have the important aspect of a speech, you are one step ahead of many of your colleagues. On the other hand, if you prepare yourself great at impromptu speeches or random speeches, table topics, this will really help you with the questions that may arise later on. Because as stated before guys, you cannot prepare that much for random questions. It's very hard when someone asks you about X thing that you didn't even think about or maybe you wouldn't expect. And the very things that happens is most likely you get blank and you have no idea what to say. Or maybe you know what to say it, but you cannot say it because you cannot just make a structure. You cannot make a proper introduction. You cannot make the one, two, three, maybe five points that you need to make to make sense and then eventually to make a closure so they will remember or they will actually say, okay, this person knows how to reply in a articulate manner. Now, those by far are already very powerful, making speeches, going there, presenting yourself, getting rid of fear, or as I prefer to say it, managing your fear, because to be honest, fear is always going to be there present. The only difference is that some people can manage it better than others. But there's another great thing that you can get at Toastmasters. You will get your prepared speeches, your table topics or impromptu speeches, and even interactions evaluated and given feedback. So this is great because not only you are practicing, but of course, if you practice something in the wrong way, it's not going to be a great result. Hence, the importance on getting evaluation and feedback. When they propose you that you need to improve your hook, or maybe that you need to relax, or maybe that you move a lot your hands, or maybe that you have no body movement at all, or maybe that your eyes are gazing everywhere. Maybe you will pay extra attention into these details. Later on, maybe you can just stick to one person instead of just gazing to the roof or to the floor. Maybe next you're going to work with your introduction and then you're going to work with your ideas. You want to make them very chronological. Maybe later on you want to practice with your hands instead of just moving them randomly, you can just work them through the speech. There's a lot of ways in which you will get evaluated and given feedback. And of course, the main idea is to take this into consideration and try to improve your speech. One of the most important parts on this is that you are not going to just get roasted. So of course, make no fear on that. You're going to get evaluated or given feedback on great things that you already have. So for instance, I never knew that my voice was strong enough. 
So I give my speech and in my mind I was like, okay, I'm going to be making a clown of myself in this speech. This is the very first time I go here to this club of prepared people that know how to make speeches and I have no idea. I always become red on my face. I was all ashamed of myself, but at the end of that speech, one of the members or evaluators told me, you have a great voice, keep working with that. And ever since I have this sticking in my mind and I work a lot with my voice. So, although I know that I may have a lot of problems, I at least know now that my speech or my voice is strong enough. There's one quote that I love from Bruce Lee and I want to share it with you guys. It states, I fear not the man that practices 10,000 kicks once, but the man that practices one kick 10,000 times. This means essentially that practice makes bad meaning that the more you practice something, the best you're going to be delivering the result. So the same is true with speeches, with public speaking. The more you show up there, the more you practice your speeches, the more you interact, the more you work with your hands, the more you work with your speech, with your tone, with your voice, maybe with the gaze of your eyes, maybe with the questions, with the content. The more you practice with that, the more you're going to have success with your final results. Unfortunately, as you can imagine, this takes a lot of time. And yes, if you are working your public speaking or your communication skills or leadership skills, you're going to take a lot of time. There's a lot of people that go to Toastmaster clubs and say that they want to improve their public speaking because they will be delivering a speech in a conference or because they're going to be presenting a product pitch or maybe business pitch to an investor or so, or maybe because they want to deliver very results in their companies, or maybe because they want to improve their reporting skills with either their boss or teammates. And the problem is that they come here maybe one, two weeks in order to expect a lot of changes. And of course, this takes a lot of time, guys. So just keep that in mind. It takes time to improve. Emotional intelligence is also practiced here a lot because there's a lot of interaction with the members. You need to know the soft spot. Whenever you are evaluating someone, you need to know about their personality, if they're going to take this positively, maybe negatively. Or maybe if you're the president, how to motivate others or maybe if you are the VP of affiliation or membership, how to make people from outside come to the club and stay in the club. All this, of course, requires emotional intelligence. But to be honest, this is the best place to practice that because worst case scenario is just a hobby. It's just a club. Instead, if you do this in your job or maybe you do this in college, you will maybe have some problems with your teammates or working with your colleagues. Maybe you even get fired or so, something that you do not want to see. So moral of the story is that Toastmasters clubs are essentially playgrounds in which you can have errors, you can practice whatever you want, you can try any new things and there will be no real consequences. Whereas maybe if you do that while working, well, maybe someone may not like that interaction and maybe even you get fired. So not that great to practice social interactions or emotional intelligence while working. Okay guys, now let's make a quick closure. Now you already know what's Toastmaster and how it can help you, especially on the communication skill part. Now you already know that prepared speeches and prep speeches will help you in your professional career. You know now that you will be receiving evaluation, feedback, and of course tips from the members in order to improve yourself. Of course, this takes a lot of time, but it's quite worth it. I will always argue that investing in yourself is one of the best things you can do throughout your life. And of course, if you want to check out any Toastmaster club near you, I will be leaving you in the description the link, which is a find a club link that will show you the nearest club around you. And I do want to warn you that there are three main type of sessions currently because of the pandemic. And the very first one will be online. As you can imagine, it will be via Zoom or any similar tool. We have in-person meetings, which of course are great because you interact person to person, you feel the actual people there, you feel the fear of public speaking. And finally, we have the hybrid sessions, which in my opinion has the best of the two. You get the online meetings, you get to interact with the camera, the position, lighting, and improving your speech. You don't feel that much that fear of public speaking. And you have the in-person experience, which is of course great because you need to improve that as well. And I will be also leaving you my club, which is Tech de Monterrey, it's from Monterrey, Mexico. If you want to join us either online or in a hybrid session or in person session, you are more than invited. And guys, remember that this is part number one and part number two and three are coming soon. So click on the notification bell if you haven't 
so you ensure to get the next videos. And finally guys, if you are a Toastmaster member, please let us know in the comment section below what is your experience, what have you gotten from Toastmasters, what are the tips that you can give us, maybe communication skills or leadership skills, how do you develop that part of leadership, do you actually use the Toastmaster abilities or skills at your work or what else can you let us know about that. I'm pretty sure that a lot of people will be looking forward to those comments. And more importantly, guys, it's always great to know, of course, fellow chemical engineers, but more importantly, always great to know fellow chemical engineers in Toastmasters. On my behalf, that will be it, guys. I'll see you in the next videos.